It's OK Football's Luton Town Show, and we're here in the heart of Hightown, in the world-famous Bricklayer's Arms, and we're here to discuss what's been going on at Luton Town this week. And with me, I have my co-host, I have Beefy, I've got producer Matt, and joining us as a special guest, we got YouTube sensation regarding Luton Town, <laughs> Lewis Williams. How are we all doing, lads? Uh, I think Lewis has the best-rated military-based quiz show in the Norfolk area at that time, and Phil well, will get that joke. I, I don't get that joke. As it's long as it's as long an as Alan, the, Alan Partridge joke. Okay, as long as like the one person that's not here gets that joke. Yep. That's <laughs> all that matters. Yeah, we're, we're all doing good. Yeah, we're, Lewis. Of yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Remember, <laughs> talk into the <laughs> mic and produce a mat. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. I had an absolutely brilliant day yesterday. We'll talk about what it happened more. yesterday. Uh, I think we <laughs> won a game of football finally. And I must have blocked that out. It's such an <laughs> unusual memory. Yeah, people watching this on Tuesday will be, what are they talking about yesterday? <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, we film on Sundays. Yeah. Instead so of going to church. It's all fresh. <laughs> fresh in our mind. But nonetheless, let's round up everything that's gone on around Kenilworth Road this week in our news segment. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. Ramona. Okay, well, I guess there's the little matter of Luton 3, Watford nil that we got to discuss. Now, when the team news was announced, how were we feeling? You know, we'll just jump in. I, Let I, was, I haven't been with. optimistic at all this year. I've, no. I've carried no optimism forward. Um, you know, I put us 12th in the league prediction table, uh, and I, I was suddenly thinking I was being too optimistic. So I went into yesterday with no hopes. No hopes at all. I saw the team, McGuinness is back. Mm, I thought maybe just we might hang on for a draw. That's how I was feeling before the game. Yeah, and then what happened? So 3-5-2, we played a 3-5-2, right? Yeah. It's hard to say, isn't it? Yeah, it I, I wasn't confident, to be fair, because without Nakamba, and in a game where you need like a Nakamba, mm. like just winning those battles in the field, I thought, why is he not starting? Surely he was a number one star. But then... Despite saying that, Kraus and Clark worked extremely well as the midfield too, and I didn't have to worry. So, yeah, yeah. what? So Chong was sort of playing in front of the two of them it, as a ten. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Strikers. Yeah, but that, that's sort of what we did last time. Because like in the twenty two twenty three season, when I say last time, you know, you play two eights and you play a ten, and people say, "Oh, it's not a ten. It it is a ten. It's like two eights, a ten, and it helps when in the twenty two twenty three season, one of those eights was marvelous in the camber." Yeah, that but they, they did. They did a job yesterday. They did, yeah. and one of the things that was most impressive yesterday was that press. Whenever Watford had the ball, we were looking to turn it over. No space at all, and they just—I mean, we were great, but Watford were shite. They were absolutely dreadful, and they turned the ball over again and again and again to that press. It was so good to watch. I don't think Watford were as bad as people oh, have made out. They, Their own fans have made out. I think. Tactically, we got everything spot on yesterday. Did, yep. They were very stubborn. They, they actually did what we've been doing all season in the sense of just keep playing the same way and yeah. not changing. Because if they actually went long a few times, they would have probably caused us a few different problems. Yeah. But they carried on playing out from the back. And it's yet again another example of modern day football. It doesn't always work. Don't always play out from the back. Yeah, they, they were, like you say, really stubborn, constantly trying to play around a press that was just working brilliantly. Uh, and where's that adaptation halfway through? What we did yesterday that we haven't done all year is play the ball long. And Morris had an absolutely brilliant game. He won every single ball in the air. He held the ball up. He laid it off. He was brilliant. And he well, deserved that goal. look at the third goal. goal. Look at the third goal. Yep, bang. Kaminsky the got the assist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And you have... Uh, you have Ryan Porteous, who everyone, like mm -hmm. Watford fans, were lauding him before. Like, oh, yeah, yeah Porteous, he's going to love this, isn't he? He's playing loads of Hibs Hearts derbies, but it might as well be the dog and duck against uh, <laughs> the earthly <laughs> piddle. He wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd never make it into the dog and duck first <sighs> team. God, no, reserves. Dog and, <laughs> dog and duck development. <laughs> Do you know the, the thing uh, I... Credit to the Watford social media team for their pre-match video. So funny. Gave uh, us I, that extra uh, yeah, exactly. It just like, thank you. <laughs> that just drove us on to beat them. It was brilliant. And you know, Kenworth Road. Not. Uh, it's got charms that you have to grow to appreciate, right? 
But when you just look at the footage, it's not good. Um, so them putting that up beforehand and then getting absolutely spanked was just lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, I, I loved it. I thought that was top banter. It was. And like from a, okay, from a video editing perspective, it was artistic, wasn't it? It was artistic, but <laughs> and, uh, to be fair, they did describe Luton extremely well. I, I can't deny that. I can't sugarcoat that, but <laughs> I could make the same exact video in Watford in Feb. So to, to, to be to fair, if you tried to make it in Watford, your camera would get stolen. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, you know, you you take the the area surrounding Kenilworth Road, and then you take the area surrounding Vicarage Road. They're, they're two not very much in it. Yeah, yeah, there's not much in it. Like the, the houses are very similar, the the roads are very similar. If anything, I, I think you know Vicarage Road really like is really tight. You know, the only thing is they have a hospital like literally showing a wall with one of their stadiums. Yeah, we could have done with that yesterday, couldn't we? We could have sent all oh. the. Uh, Watford players there for their burns. Oh, whoa. oh I thought you were going to talk about all the injury crisis. So uh, no, we we're, yeah, we're beyond hospital for some of them. Here we are again with another centre half injury crisis. Mm. Why do we keep having to talk about this? So let's talk about the defence we finished with. So we had 18-year-old Joe Johnson left wing back. We had Alfie Doughty who played. I would say the defensive game of his life. Wow. Yeah. A left centre back. Like one of the things that you no one will ever say is Alfie Doughty is good defensively. But yesterday he pretty much was yep. he shushed everyone up. I couldn't believe it. And then McGuinness in the middle, who had a his best game. Epic. His best game for Luton, yep. Best game of Luton shirt. Hashioka, first game back from Exile. <laughs> yeah, very much from his injury in pre-season. And oh, then Victor okay. Moses, a, a right winger playing right back, uh, right wing back even, and at times it was a, a flat back five. Where do we go from here? <laughs> I think, you know, it was great and all that, but we've just got to hope that Reese Burke has got a little knock. It looked like hamstring he was pulling mm-hmm. when he was down, so let's hope that's it's minor. It's always a hamstring he's pulling. Yes, it is. Um mm. Let's hope that's minor and he's back soon because however great that was for 40 minutes yesterday, let's not bet on it. Mm. I think it was just an overstretch. Based on what yeah. I saw, it looked like he was trying to do the splits. Right. Never try and do the splits. <laughs> Never no. try and do the splits. Yeah. Unless you're prepared. But no, I think it was just a, a slight knock that he took. Flat. Yeah, let's talk about McGuinness then. So best sh- best performance in Luton shirt, without doubt. Um, did you think he had it in him? Yes, I think he's just been un- under like performing like the rest of the team have. I think when you look at what he he did last year for in a really poor Cardiff team, I understand the money we paid. Of course, the ten million is going to raise a few question marks, mm. but I think if we started off positive, or like positivity, like throughout the season, right at the start, then yeah, he would have. I think he would have shown his true qualities a lot sooner. So we've now seen it. I think now it's he needs to use that performance and take it into his next get few games. Yeah, he might. He, he needed a battle. I think it, I needed a battle to like kickstart him. I think it's been a bit unfair as well because he's been poor in a really poor team this year, mm. and it's so it's it's not easy to look good when the rest of the team is playing so badly. So I think he went up a level as did the whole team yesterday, and that's you know that's where he's going to be for us because I think like you say his quality had a, a great year last year in pretty ordinary team um, at Cardiff and I think he's going to do a good job for us well if he stays fit. I think yesterday him alongside Holmes as well I thought Holmes was also actually brilliant in mm-hmm. defence. Yeah yeah, yeah. Br- and brings a, us on to a the magnificent first goal. assist. Yeah bringing us on to the first goal like to catch that ball from the corner turn swivel uh, yeah Clark nicks the goal but maybe it just need that extra touch to sort of confuse Backman. I, d- uh, I don't think it was going in from home shot, really, was it? It definitely needed mm. that little little nick off Clark, and wasn't he a happy bunny? I think Holmes was desperate for a goal, if you saw that back pass. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. That could have completely changed the game as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, after 10 minutes, my hands were, I was like this, I was like, no, please. The, f- the thing is, if you're Kaminsky in that situation, unless you're certain that is going wide, mm-hmm. just give away the free kick. Mm. Grab the ball and give the free kick away, because... You know, maybe from his angle, he knew that it wasn't going in, so he left it because um, oh, he was close. No, he, he was he close he enough w- to get it. I know. I was right behind the the line of it because where I sit in block E, and I saw how close that was. Yeah. It, it was like a li- at most three inches wide. Yeah, I don't know what the XG on a 
twelve yard indirect free kick is, but <laughs> give it away and get get the ball under control. You know, that's what I was thinking. Or if you can't grab it, head it or something. Um, yeah, it was scary moments, wasn't it? Yeah, Holmes, wild performance from him. First start for him, and it, it, he grew into the game. It looks like we got a player there. Yeah, we do. Uh, I mean, he's you know got the experience, hasn't he, at this level? Mm. I think like over two hundred games for Reading. Yeah, he's going to be a very decent option for us. Probably not going to be a first team starter regularly, but he looked like we can rely on him. Well, if he can stay fit, he's definitely going to get twenty <laughs> games <laughs> in our defence. <laughs> but like what? the rest of them, he also dropped at half time. So yeah, was that the head? Uh, in- yeah, it was it might have been the head injury, right? Yeah, but he looked fine. Like, I saw him, like him, Locks, uh, Bell. Every, everyone was yeah. like waiting in the the tunnel area for full time. Right. He l- Holmes looked fine. He's massive, by the way. You don't realise how big he is. Yeah. Uh, like I saw him standing next to Tom Lock here, and Tom just looked like. A regular man next to him. I mean, Tom Lockyer, not Tom Holmes. Tom Holmes is giant. I don't know how he fits down the tunnel. Well, I don't know how anyone fits down that tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> I love that video uh, after the game where you see them all like, you know, <laughs> like walking down the tunnel like that. Because obviously, like, since the Kenny was built in 1905, average height and the size of athletes has uh, gone yeah, up. Yeah, it's gone up a bit. I don't yeah. know if you saw the uh, aftermatch tunnel video. That the Bloom Town did. That was a lot oh. of fun. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, I love Jamie, that. Jamie yeah. Brown <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's talk about Colton Morris and the impact he had. Wow. Like, what what difference like one man in a team can make? You know, he took his goal really well. It, it sort of that back post header is kind of like Elijah Adebayo esque. Uh, it's what we used to see from Elijah. You know, the back post header into the ground, roof of the net, sensational stuff. Yeah, and it wasn't just the goal. I mean, that first half performance, winning every... We, we won 80% of the aerial duels in the first half. And that just shows you how dominant we were. And most of them were him. He was absolutely everywhere. And it's great to see him back because he's not had a great start to the season. Dropped for a couple he's of games. He's been injured, like, the whole time. It, he, has he? Is that what it is? Well, yeah, he came, came in against Wednesday, got the brace, and then he was out. Oh, no, so I mean, since b- Wednesday. before that, he was oh. uh, out for a couple of games. He, he must have been carrying an injury yeah, from preseason. Yeah, it certainly felt like it because he was so far off the pace, wasn't he? But yesterday, he was back. Oh, yeah, he was back. So back. <laughs> yeah, I, de- I feel like... Sexy back. It definitely made a huge impact with him and Adebayo being up there because Adebayo didn't look as isolated I as you had Carlton yeah. knocking on all of those headers onto him. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, what a difference. What a difference playing two up top makes, right? It, yeah, yeah, it causes teams all sorts of problems. You know, I think in previous games we've had one striker against three centre-halves. And I do feel sorry for Elijah in that situation because he can't do it on his own. He mm. needs players around him to feed off those loose balls when he does eventually win one. Or it's a 50-50, a 50-50 ball to be one in the middle. But what's even more great is, OK, if Elijah isn't performing now... He's got competition. Brown's knocking on that door, yeah. which yeah. is exactly what we want. We've, we, ha- I feel like competition at Luton's been quite rare because mm-hmm. of the amount of injuries we've sustained over the last 18 months. So, fingers crossed, going forward, we can start u- rotating. Players can be better looked after. And, you know, with games coming out Saturday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, you know, we can, like, make those replacements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so Wednesday. Why have we got a game on Wednesday? It's a nightmare for, like, pod scheduling. Yeah, you know, like getting out of the match previews never. You're going to know this as well because yeah. you know making all the videos. Yeah. Like, what, when am I going to fit all these? I in? can't believe that EFL didn't think about us when they decided this. <laughs> I know it's disgraceful, disgraceful. You know, I, don't, I don't even know who to at who least to get on 12, the 12 people watch this show, and now they're <laughs> inconvenienced. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, talking about the other news that's gone on around Kenilworth Road and managing players. So injury news: Mengi out for three weeks. Ruel Waters out for well, a minimum of two months, broken foot. Like I imagine it's not every single bone in his foot. Where did he pick it up? Uh, in his foot, I believe. <laughs> no, <laughs> in training. He's I don't know. Probably he's been playing with. A he's been playing with it. Yeah, wow. it's, it's uh, it's help. Yeah, since <laughs> since the last international break, right? Um, it, it's not great, but that shows that the signs of, um, you know lack of defence and I actually put out a tweet saying it's a good thing we didn't sign Nathan Ngoy because imagine having like one extra defender in these times but 
It is what it is. And Mads is back on the grass. And I think Mads needs that break. Not not a broken foot. He needs <laughs> that break in the in the first team, doesn't he? Yeah, what's up with him? I don't know. He's, He's Danish. Keeps, he keeps breaking down. Yeah. <laughs> they all seem to keep breaking down. It is something that needs to be looked at, though, because I can understand an injury crisis happens once. You know, that's bad luck. The first one came with Nathan Jones. You know, I remember that game against Huddersfield where, like, players were just... <laughs> just walk in, but they they just they were injured. You could just tell they were absolutely shattered. Yeah, I remember Elijah, right? Yeah. You know when he was like, <laughs> yeah, so exactly to the end. <laughs> but then in that summer we kind of like resolved it by br- signing probably a lot more too many players just to make sure we were covered in all situations. Imagine having a squad these know, days. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we sort that out for the, our promotion season. But then again, Premier League happens, right? Okay, the pace of the Premier League. Maybe it was too much for certain players. But for it to happen again three times in four years... You've only played ten games yeah, as well. Yeah. It can't just be bad luck. It has to be, what are we doing? In, are we just working too hard in training? Are we mm. doing the recovery right? Wh- wh- what are we doing? Bec- I don't want to accuse or I come across that I'm attacking people. <laughs> certainly I'm not attacking anyone. Uh, note to everyone watching, Lewis you know? is attacking people. <laughs> yeah. he, he is kicking beefy under the table right now. I'm also an expert when recovering <laughs> yeah. from hamstrings, you know, but... but Something needs to be looked at. I can't mm. just be the only one who thinks it can't just be bad luck. Like, I'd love to know what the stats are with centre halves with other championship clubs. Are they getting the same problems as what we yeah. are? It's worse when you play three as well, isn't it? Because it doesn't an take many three. injuries for an you. An open to, three yeah. where they roam forward as well. But it doesn't take many injuries for you to suddenly be short in that position um, and play an Alfie Doughty as a centre back. Yeah, well, well, from that performance yesterday, he can continue yep. playing centre back. Yep, that's I'm it. We'll keep him. That. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all the news from around Kenilworth Road this week, as well as talking about Luton 3, Watford 0. I just wanted to say it again, to be honest. Um, now it's time to spin the wheel. It's OK Football's Wheel of Games. It's time for the wheel. Wheel of Games, Wheel of Games, Wheel of Games, Wheel of Games. It's time to spin the wheel. Well, you're getting really good at spinning this. That is this. a great spin. Yeah. Quality spin. Spin, spin again. Spin. <laughs> you'll, you'll see it on the rewatch. Don't oh, worry. Okay. Spin again. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you're really good at spinning. It's okay. Football against humanity. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time to play okay football against humanity. You got your cards, gents? Way. Lovely. Love that. Editing masterclass. Right, so the question is, what did Tom Cleverley say to the Watford team ahead of that game to have them come out looking so rubbish? I'll start. Um, Tom Cleverley told the Watford players before the game to start doing crimes. Okay. That performance was crime against humanity. Ooh, nice. Mm. Uh, Tom Cleverley's... Pre-match team talk, silence. (laughs) Okay. Tom Cleverley told the Watford team before the game, one ring to rule them all. (laughs) Okay, my my second one. Um, Tom Cleverley told the Watford players before the game to do unfathomable stupidity. Yep, they did. (laughs) They followed the plan. (laughs) Uh, now I'm really sorry, Tom. But what Tom didn't—he didn't say anything to them. Instead, he just showed them an ugly face. <laughs> sorry, <Wow>. Tom. <laughs> Lewis, are you got any old job me to knock out my last one? I think you. Oh, oh, I've got <laughs> this one. Like, okay, oh, well, well, you've got to go for that one. Well, I didn't know if this was acceptable. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's, that's absolutely not acceptable. <laughs> yeah. So, what, what did Tom Cleverly do to the Watford team before? <laughs> I'll just put this one as faffing about. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> faffing about. <laughs> there was another so. one, but it's definitely not PG. So, uh, like, uh, okay. <laughs> what, what did Tom Cleverly do before uh, the, the match? He brought in a Japanese tourist who wants something very badly but cannot communicate it. Yeah, they looked like a team that had been talked to in that way, didn't they? Oh, yeah. We we need to have another version of this game where we take out the non-PG cards, but then release it as a separate episode, Ooh. Yeah. not 
on our main YouTube channel okay so that. we don't get cancelled. Well, we, we can release it on, uh, I don't know, what, what the kids Sorry. are using these wins? days. Ooh, silence. Silence. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, that's it from OK Football's Wheel of Games. <laughs> now it's time for Mark the Hatter's Super Question of the Week. Mark the Hatter. He's put a question to us. Mark the Hatter. He's put a question to us. Okay, so obviously thanks to Mark for the super question of the week. Uh, it's a topical question, as always. How many combined goals in all competitions from the players that played in the 3 0 win yesterday against Watford scored for Luton Town? The com- answer must be within three goals. <laughs> so I will go. Make it a little bit easier for you all. I'll go through the players, and if you come up with you... Oh, that, that will help, yeah. Right. Uh, Kaminsky? None. Yep. Yes, right, cancel. We, we've won. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Uh, Tom Holmes? For Luton? All competitions. All competitions for Luton, zero. Zero. Zero, yep. McGuinness? Zero. Reese Burke? Four. Two. Three. Oh, he's on the money. Oh, Four, nice. Exactly. Alfie Doughty? 12. No, Five. way too high. Five. Five. Wow. Victor Moses? Zero. One. One, One. Yeah. two. Yeah, One. yeah, we were here. We were here. We saw it. <laughs> Jordan Clark? 12. 15. No. 22. So you two are within three. It is three. actually 14. Mm. Tom Krause? One. One. Yep. Tahith Chong? Seven. Two. Six. Yes, exactly. Oh, oh nice. There we go. Elijah Radebeo. 48. 53. 51. Nobody is within three. It was actually 42. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Carlton Morris. 35. 41. 43. Lewis was one off. It was 34. Oh, oh well done. Oh, tight. Uh, Pelly Radican Pansy. 25. 16. 19. Ollie was closest. It's 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daiki Ashioka? None. None. Uh, None. Does it, do own goals count? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> He's got like three own goals, <laughs> yeah. doesn't he? Uh, Marvellous Nakamba? Zero. One. Zero, sure. One. Zero. Uh, the penalty in the shootout. <laughs> it's zero on zero. this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe Johnson? Zero. 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 And Jacob Brown? Three. Seven. Four. Four. Yeah. Oh, I was wi- I was within three though. I was looking at the answer. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question, Mark. Uh, yeah, well done, well done. Thank you, Mark the Hatter, for submitting the question. Really appreciate it, mate. Love you, mate. Love you. Right, but Matt, why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? I don't know, Ollie. Why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? <gasps> because, because there's, there's a, a joke in here. here. It's so cringe. I love it. I went to a silent auction. I want a dog whistle and two mimes. Okay, so this week's joke, here we go. Uh, A woman wakes up on her birthday and says to her husband, Honey, I had a dream last night that you gave me a diamond necklace for my birthday. What do you think it means? Her husband smiles and says, Maybe tonight you'll find out. Later that night, they go to a nice show. They have dinner at their special place. At the end of the meal, the husband takes out a small gift-wrapped box and gives it to the wife and says, Happy birthday, honey. She opens it up and it's a book titled How to Interpret Your Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Anyway, so thank you, Matt. Now it's time to look ahead to the next game. So we've got Sunderland and we've got Coventry before we're back here in the Brickies again to record. But we also play the Sluga Six. Sluga, Sluga, Sluga. So, Sluga 6 results. Well done to me. I correctly predicted a Hatter's win. Despite this, I ended up with three points. I went for a 2-0, but I maintained my lead. Uh, Mark and Phil, they bagged four points, whilst Matt and Pete from the Do Not Scratch Your Eyes podcast gained only two points. And... Phil, who's not here this week, 
He'll be speaking to someone from the Roker Report, so keep an eye out for his exceptional ITC, uh, ICT skills. Like, I, I love those. He, he literally just, he can't screen grab off a computer or save and then share as a PDF. So he, he literally, he, ta he takes a picture of his of his computer. That man screen. is a tin of boiled sweets away from being 65 <laughs> years old. <laughs> love it. Yeah, love so you, Phil. Phil. Yeah, I love Phil. Uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, he he will post up the predictions with uh, a picture from his phone before our game against the Mackhams on Wednesday. But let's la have a look at ahead to Luton versus Sunderland. Can we take the fight and desire from the Watford game into this Sunderland game? Will we have a defence? I don't think we'll have a defence, but I think we'll scratch out a lovely draw. Oh, um, I'd take a draw right now. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a tough game, obviously, with the injuries that we've just taken. But I think after after the game, we'll have a bit more spirit behind us and we'll be able to have a performance at least. I think Sunderland look very decent this year. <coughs> and like you, I'd take a draw. Um, if we can carry this form forward, then it's possible we nick it. But I think a draw is exactly where I'd like us to be. It should be the start of the, the season for us, right? You draw a line under the previous nine games and take that Watford game as the springboard. 100%, yeah. I think even if you perform 80% of what we saw on Saturday against Sunderland, you get a positive result. But I think the questions will always come down to who's available at the back. Because <laughs> if we've got a strong defensive line, I think we're back, we're back us to do something or get something a decent result. But if we don't, then... What do we do? Do we change the formation to put more attacking players in just to match Sunderland? Because Sunderland are play a different style to Watford. So well, they're good, aren't they? Well, they've that, that proven they can be hit and miss style, as well. Yeah. Like they yeah. did lose against Plymouth, so mm -hmm. they've proven they can have a, an off night mm -hmm. and long trip from Sunderland. So hopefully that plays a, a massive factor as well. And we also get an extra day recovery because they play today, which is Sunday. So yeah. Amazing. Uh, I, to be honest, I hope that we play two up top again, Elijah and Morris against yeah. Metham and 09. I, to be honest, I, I, don't, I don't see those two being able to handle Elijah and Morris. Well, if Morris can turn out a performance on Wednesday like he did yesterday, then he's going to be a real handful for them. Mm. Um, that's what we're hoping for. And let's keep up this direct football because people don't seem to like it. And yeah. we saw that Watford looked really uncomfortable. And we spent the whole season playing out from the back, and it hasn't worked. Um, you know, we're, we're not quite as bad as Southampton, but we're, we're pretty bad at it. Um, so going direct, yeah, let's keep at it. Let's keep at it and see what happens. Then we've got Cov afterwards. Mark Robbins not having soon, a good time. Soon to be managerless, Coventry, uh, maybe. Well, you know what? He, we were talking about this before cameras rolled. He's got a lot of credit in the bank. Like People say Rob Edwards has a lot of credit in the bank because he took us to the Premier League, but... Mark Robbins went in a Cov in League Two and has taken them all the way up to uh, pretty much the verge of the Premier League, one kick away. Thank you, Darbo. Yep. And uh, well, let's let's see how the next two weeks play out because he looks um, from the fans at least to be under pressure. Yeah, we had a fight with one where he was having verbals with them. I don't actually they? understand what that actually does to help the players. Like, I understand because what happens is. If players just walk down the tunnel, fans moan, oh, why do they not stay and clap us? Mm -hmm. But then when they do stay and clap, you then give them dog abuse. And then so why would they stay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so you're, I don't understand why I have a go at them. I honest, like for me, the best way to do it is don't clap. just Or leave. Or let them just clap to an, em an empty seat. That, that for me does more. Because they know straight away that, okay, yeah, the fans mm -hmm. are not happy here. But I think Coventry, for some weird reason, I don't know what's going on, Maybe it's tactical, but from what I because I watched them play against Tottenham, and they were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, how they had a poor start in the championship. So I I, I do think it can click because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. It's right. What what tweaks do they need to do? Does it yeah. need a new face, like maybe a different coaching staff, or maybe it needs one or two faces to shut up? But that something needs to happen. Yeah. It's it's crazy. We, we had them all. We had Cov down as our dark horse as well. But you had West Brom, you had Oxford. We had the dark horse derby this week. Yeah, me and Matt. Yeah, West oh. Brom Oxford. 
Wow. Yeah. No, well, we'll talk about that on Champ Chat, won't we? But that's probably a good time to wrap up this show. Uh, as always, if you've enjoyed this show, remember, like the video, subscribe for even more Luton Town content. And a big thank you to our host, the Bricklayers Arms. If you're in Luton, if you're not from Luton, you know, and you want a fantastic match day atmosphere when you're not at the Kenny or you want to watch some football, come on down. They also have a Halloween beer festival. I think that's going to be in frame, I'll, isn't it? I'll be here every day. Yeah, um, I'll be here a couple of the days. Come see us. Um, quiz on Mondays, live football, good beer. That's got everything you want from a pub. Yeah. It's a great place to be, and uh, Halloween Beer Festival starting 31st of August. and October. As October. Oh, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I forget I forget all my months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I barely slept last night. Too much excitement following Too much Watford excitement, game. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Definitely uh, that I just don't know the months and the orders of the months, you know. Um, as always, a big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification and Carry On for keeping us sounding great. And also a big thank you to the record shop in Amersham. Uh, go on down if you collect vinyl, LPs, CDs, guitars. Uh, mention the OK Football Show. You might even get a discount. Just be nice about it, you know. And, and don't don't complain to us in the comments if you're if you're not nice about it. And then they say, oh, well, I'm not giving you a discount. Yeah, just be nice and, and point to the sign. There's a nice sign. It says the OK Football Show. So yeah, I watched those guys. Right, that's us done. So Bye. On, to, on to Sunderland and Cov. And let's be having it. As always, come on, you hatters. <laughs>